to work. So in our JavaScript, inside render list element, we attach an event listener to the remove button. Let's do the same for the fave button. I believe it had a class of fave, so button.fave. And we won't, don't want to call remove dino. We want to call fave or fave dino or something like that. So let's throw that down here, or we can throw it up here. Either way. Fave dino. I'll put my comma in. And we know it will also receive the event as an argument. And this is already bound correctly because we copied and pasted. If I just throw console.log fave here, make sure that it actually shows up. Refresh, click fave. Yep. All right. What do we really want to do? We want to change the appearance of the entire li. So we need the list item, just like we did here. We can use closest to get it. And then we could just start modifying its style. I would prefer to add a class, like in CSS. We could have a rule for the fave class. And say, It has a background color of that, and maybe a border color of a slightly darker version of the same thing. And then we can just say list item dot class list add. We used remove earlier. Now, you may recall that fave class also appears in this button. So that changed the color of that, too. So now it's going to just blend right in with the background, which isn't great. So let's be more specific. Not just anything with a class of fave, but something that also has a class of dino and a class of fave. If both classes are present. We want to change the background color. Click it again. Yay. Yay. Now, some of you had it so that that kind of f faded in sort of softly. What we could do is on the rule for dyno, add a rule transition. I'll set it to two seconds so it's really dramatic and you can see it happening. And watch what happens. It fades. Now, I want it to be not quite instantaneous, but close. I wanted to just, you know, make make it look like it happens right away, but um, just kind of softly. So I'm going to put 0 0.25 seconds. So what this rule means is that if any of these properties change due to JavaScript or some pseudo class becoming true or something like that, uh, then we want to transition from the current value to the new value gradually over the course of a quarter of a second. 
So that looks nice, but I can't unfave them right now. And also, mm, that's not saving anything. It doesn't come back when I refresh. So what can I do? Say again? Did you say something? Who said something? Nobody said anything? You said something. And you don't want to? Okay. <laughs> Didn't just say that. All right, so what we save in local storage is this dinos array. And what we put in the dinos array is this dino object right here. So we could add a new field to it called fave and just set it to false initially. Leave my trailing comma in there. And then when we fave it, we want to change it to true. So how do we do that? We, we don't really want to do it any place except inside fave dino. And we don't have the dinosaur there. We only have the event and anything we can get from the event. Now, if we tried really hard, we, we grabbed the list item already so we could look at that data set, data set and get the ID and then we'll search through the array for that ID, but that's way too much trouble. It'd be really nice if we could just pass it, the dino object in as an argument, but we used bind. Well, guess what? You can still pass arguments. At the time that you bind this, you can also tell it what arguments you want it to pass when it does eventually call it, when the event fires. Just add them as additional arguments here. The first argument to bind will be what you want to set this to, and any additional arguments you pass in will be passed as arguments to that function. So. We already have the dino object inside render list item. It was passed in. So if we say bind this comma dino, then what I'm suggesting is maybe that'll be available to us inside fave dino when we run it. Question is, where's it gonna put that? Is that gonna be the first or second argument? If we wanna find out, guess what? We said that JavaScript doesn't enforce the number of arguments, but you can get to all the arguments even, even if you didn't name them through a variable called arguments. Ah, provided you can spell arguments. So let's just console log arguments when we run fave. Oh. Let's run fave. All right. Here's this thing. The first one is this object. The second one is the event. So when you use bind to pass arguments to something and is an event listener, the event is going to be passed in as the last argument. So anything you explicitly pass in here is going to come first, then the event at the very end. Now we got some sort of a, uh oh yeah, we had a problem there because we had the arguments in the wrong order. Cool. So now that we have that, what can we do? Dino dot fave equals true. So we've changed it, but it still won't be there if we refresh, will it? What do I have to do? How do we update local storage? Save. Just that save. Anytime we mess with that array or one of the objects in it, we have to save. Refresh. Favorite, refresh. Let's do that again. Hmm. What's going on? Let's look at this dot dinos. Come on, you. That's not what I said. 
Not this, app.dinos. There's Triceratops. Fave is true. We're not doing anything when we first, we're only ever changing the uh, class on the LI when we click the button. We're not doing it when the page loads, are we? So we'll have to add a little logic here. How about where we add this, add the class? Well, OK, wait. Well, let's, let's go over this again. So when the page first loads, it goes over everything in the array, and it calls add dino on it. So add dino st sticks it on the array and creates this list item. So when we create the list item, we need to add that class if it should be faved already. Make sense? So when we first build the list item, we need to make that decision. You get why? Look at render list item. OK, we do things like set the text content on dino name. We could also say if dino.fave item.classList add fave. Then when the page first loads, it'll add that if appropriate. Let's do T-Rex as well, refresh the page. Sure enough, it persists. But I still can't turn it back off. I want to click it again and have it unfave it. So what could we do in fave dino to accomplish that? What did you do, those of you who did this? Some of you made this work. Yeah, Kyle. So what I did was I checked back at what color the background was, and if it was yellow, then I clicked it and I just clicked that. Did the other thing. So in our case, since we didn't explicitly set the styles, we can just check to see if that class is already there. Yeah. Or better yet, our check can be whether dino is faved. So if we... Um, We can do this at the end. We could change the value first. So instead of dino.fave equals true, we could say dino.fave equals the opposite of what it is now. If it's true, make it false. If it's false, make it true. Then we check if it's true. And if it's true after we've done that, then we add the class. Otherwise, it was true and became false. So we should remove the class. So remember, this keeps our data in sync, actually modifying that dinosaur object. That object has nothing to do with what's on the page, right? We like to keep the two in sync with each other. That object doesn't change the page, and changing the page doesn't change that object. So to keep local storage in sync, we need to do this. And of course, we need to call save. And then to change the appearance on the page, we also need to add or remove the class as appropriate. So to know which it is, add or remove, we check what the value is. If it is a fave, then we need to add that class. So now I'll refresh the page. And I can toggle it on and off. So let's turn off Triceratops, turn on Kotosaurus. Heck, let's undo T-Rex too. Refresh, and only Kotosaurus is faved. We did it. Yay. So what are we able to do now? 
we're able to set a dyno as a fave. <laughs> 